Right guys, welcome back to the channel. It is another YouTube video. This one behind me is a GTR. This car is a new car to the customer. He bought it in and unfortunately he's got gearbox issues. So first of all, it was a bit of a, uh, a bit of a clue to what was going on when he first bought the car. For some reason, the old owner had left a prop shaft for the front wheel drive system, well front wheel drive, shall I say, in, in the boot. Um, so we quickly, realised that there was obviously an issue going on so we checked underneath and went underneath it um, and found that the ETS has locked up so we have a funny feeling we know what's happened but we just need to get the gearbox out to be able to get, gain access to that. So the way we did test it is by moving the front wheel drive, well the remaining front wheel drive prop and then putting it all in park and going to turn over the ETS unit, uh, there's like a flange where it drives off to see what the preload is and well there is no preload, it's completely locked up when it's in park. So. At the moment, I'm already, well, pretty much all the way through getting to the point dropping the rear end out so we can get access to the gearbox and soon or later, we should hopefully see the gearbox out. Right, gearbox is out. As you saw in that little time lapse there, dropped the rear end out just as I said it was about to do. Um, and now I've got the, what I call like the nose cone off of the gearbox. So inside here, if you come up and have a quick close up, inside here sits um, basically the, the, what I call the clutch mechatronics. Uh, you've got the main clutches and then you've got your ETS unit. So this ETS unit is um, the unit that we have an issue with, which I need to remove out of here. But whilst we're looking at it, we will be taking the clutch mechatronic out um, and changing the pressure sensor inside of that because they're known to fail and it's a pain in the butt to change because you have to do this to change them. So it makes sense to do it whilst we're in here. Clutches, etc., here. And then inside this front half here is where the, what we call the front wheel dry shaft is, or where it sits. Um, and if you look in here, these are also some of the common circlips um, that people replace when stripping gear sets. So these are more like a one new circlip. So you'll see people like Linny or um, Extreme sell upgraded versions of this with like grub screws, etc. Because once these go, uh, or should I say, once you remove these, they basically become stretched and you can't really get them back on properly. And if one of them comes off, oh, you're in for a big bill. So we're going to get onto this now and yeah, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so we've got the ETS unit inside the engine room now. It's easier to work on in here and it's cleaner and it saves me rolling around on the floor. So as a quick rundown, basically this is what determines what amount of drive goes to the front wheels, i.e. your four wheel drive. So the ETS unit itself. It's pretty basic in terms of how it works. There's a set of clutches inside here and basically X amount of drive comes through here, or should I say, yeah, there's always X amount of drive coming through here um, off of a box. Um, as it's predominantly rear wheel drive and then basically out of here um, this amount of drive is determined by uh, this magnet so it's kind of like if you know how aircon works it's like a like a clutch magnet if you want to think of it like that so as this energizes and this magnet comes on it basically engages the front wheel drive at a slip percentage if you want to look at it like that so now we're going to start getting into it and ripping it apart um, because I believe I'm not 100% sure but basically inside here there's also some ball bearings and when the discs get worn or they get a bit abused, um, the ball bearings can pop out and lock the whole unit up. So that's what I think has happened. So we're gonna find out anyway. All right, so we've got the top of the ETS off now. You've seen in a little video there. Um, basically, what I've got in my hand is just a pair of steels and a friction, and I'm just having a little look over them. 
Uh, what I have noticed, so basically how I determined if this was an issue with this or how we determined, shall I say, is like when this was inside the car, inside the box, etc. you've got the flange, which the front wheel drive prop goes onto. And when the handbrake is on or it's in park, shall I say, um, there should be uh, X amount of movement under like somewhere between 10 to 20 Newton meters as a rough sort of put out there. Um, amount of torque it takes to turn that flange because it'll be the drag on the clutches. Um, and this was locked up, could not move it at all. So now I've removed this cap, it now moves. Um, I've had the tool in here and I've spun this separately and it moves now. So what I think has happened is the ball bearings that sit inside here have lifted or rolled out and they've jammed, which is a common issue on some of the GTRs when they get a little bit of abuse, a little bit of friction put into them. A bit of friction, sorry, a bit of abuse, um, uh, friction's worn down, shall I say. Um, so I'm just gonna pull the rest of this out and have a look. I've just removed this little hub here. So this little hub is where the um, steels and the frictions ride off of. And there's a little roller bearing on top of this, sat on top. And basically this is the ball bearings we're talking about. And as, as I've lifted this one, I've been careful, but you can see the rest of them all sat, but this one's onto the side. So what I think's happened is this one's come out of its, out of its runner, which is a little groove here it should sit in, and it's basically got jammed under the bottom plate there, uh, on, on the bottom of here, which has then jammed these top clutch and plates in. So if I were to look very, very closely and put this on onto a flat surface, you might find one of these is slightly warped in the orientation where that bearing's popped out. But yeah, that kind of confirms it, to be honest. Um, the fact that I've released also the tension that would have been on top on this side uh, and, and, and it starts spinning again, then that's all confirmed that is what my suspicion was is that the ball bearings are popped. So yeah, good good little find. Um, it's a shame because it's quite a lot of work to get into here. But there is also a retaining plate, um, which I'll grab in a bit and we're gonna have a look at to stop this from happening. So luckily we're gonna replace all the frictions and steels anyway, so. So for an example, basically this is the ETS retaining plate or ring. And that's what it does. It goes around the outside of there and stops the ball bearings from being able to move. Because what, what what needs to happen is that when the when the ETS is engaging or engaged and that magnet is doing its job, it's the easiest way to explain it. This ball bearing these ball bearings need to almost like symmetrically rise right up this groove here. And that's what engages the clutches by pushing against the top. That makes sense. So it, it, it's, it's using these ball bearings to push the, itself away from the other surface, so to speak. So if you don't have this plate, basically they can come out and get jammed and then yeah, we get locked on. That's what's happened. You can see our fluid is black as anything. So these are also a um, like sealed for life. God, that stinks. <laughs> um, so like when you're doing your gearbox oil changes, it doesn't affect this. This is a sealed unit, so technically sealed for life. So this will be the first time it's ever been opened and yeah, my nose is offended. <laughs> so yeah, it's black. So what I can do is, um, let's come across to these, so these are the frictions. Uh, yeah. All right, so these are basically the main uh, steels and frictions. Um, which does all the hard work. So we can pop this lot out. Basically, that's just the case then. You can go to clean it out. There's a little chunk of something that's just come out of there as well. A little flake or something. Yeah, that really, that really stinks. And basically what we can do is go through these steels and frictions and just look for almost like confirmation as to maybe high wear or something that's gone on, any sort of warpage or heat, because um, these can see a lot of abuse depending on how they're driven. Um, but also equally what you can do is you can build the stack up and measure it as well. And we can, we can do that in a minute and see what's going on. So just out of curiosity and you know, it's good work, um, work machine sort of thing to do. I just want to measure the old stack to see where we're at uh, where we were at, shall I say. And this is only sort of as a, as a, as a guide. Um, we're like 35.46 mil, so from memory, 
I believe anywhere between 35 and 36 mil is pretty good. Anything below 35, I think it's normally you've got worn clutches, but this is ever so slightly on the more worn side, I would say, but the car has done 80,000 miles. So what I think's happened is these clutches have started to wear because of the mileage, um, and I'm not too sure on the spec of the car, but it might have a bit of torque, a bit of power going through it. I think, unfortunately, it's just a fluke on this one. I think basically it's, it's worn down a little bit low, and unfortunately the ball bearings popped out on that one side. That's what I think's happened. So, in my hand, I have for replacement frictions and steels. Um, this is actually a tin plate kit. As factory, I've just carried them there nine plates. So it'd be nine frictions and nine steels, whereas this is 10 frictions and 10 steels. But as just a guide here, I'm gonna measure these. And you'll see these will be close to just a tad over 36. So kind of goes within line of what I said, in, in between 35 and 36. Um, and that's not just because it's got an extra plate in there either. So if you were to take one of these steels and measure them, you'll probably find, what we at? So 1.8 there. Whereas if you were to measure a factory steel, it will be thicker, like 2.3. So what they do is they will put, um, in, to be able to get the extra material in there, so the extra plate, they put in, um, slightly thinner steels to be uh, to allow for the extra plate to go in. And the reason why we do this all for an upgrade is just for, normally on higher power cars would be to stop four wheel dry slip, etc. Cause you can end up throwing too much torque through this, but that'd be for a very high application, but this is a, a, good, a good replacement. This is for if you've got knackered clutches. Okay. Right, yeah, we've uh, jumped ahead a little bit, but I'll quickly go through it. Gearbox is back in the car. What? It needed to be seen, that's been seen basically, but as a, as a whole, subframe gearbox back in the car, nose cones back on. So what I've done is finish rebuilding the ETS. What you saw me do, I've basically done the, the, the reverse process and uh, put it back together, built it up with the new frictions and steels, um, filled up with fluid, um, added the ball bearing retainer plate, which I spoke about, and then basically bottled it all back together and set the preload on it. So it's um, to OB spec sort of thing. Uh, after that, I battled that back in to the nose cone for gearbox, as long, uh, along with the clutch mechatronic, and all I've done on that was replace the two clutch pressure sensors on there, which are the ones that are quite common for going down, which I'll show you what they look like in a minute. This is the main valve body. We can talk about this um, in quite a bit of detail. So when you have uh, jobs offered to you, regarding gearbox work most of the time a lot of people will offer these to be cleaned this is the main mechatronic so this is what controls all the shifting inside the box so as a quick overlook you've got your shift sort of noise um these are the shift pistons and basically your clutch forks for each pair of gears sit like this so imagine that's your clutch fork that slides under there and these move up and down to engage each gear so on and so forth this is um, a line pressure sensor here and basically this is the same sensor um, as what is used for the clutch pressure sensors. That's why I've got three here, as I've replaced these three. So that's what they look like, and two of these live in the clutch mechatronic and they're prone to failure, especially on the earlier cars. So we just change them for, for preventative maintenance. Um, at the same time, these is good to go through them and give them a good clean, so they do get gunked up. They've got micro filters inside. Um, you've got pistons as well inside the valve body itself, and then the solenoids do get gunked up. This car was actually pretty clean in terms of its condition of its oil, in like in terms of debris, like a good size. When you take these out, there's actually magnets on these pistons. Um, and if you look here, there's like pickups here, and that's how it knows which position this piston's in via the magnet. Um, and what can happen is when there's a lot of crud, dirt, horrible stuff inside the box, they get stuck to the side of the pistons, like you can see this tiny bit here. That is very minimal. I was just sometimes pull these out and it's like a great big fir tree. So it's not a bad box actually. I think just was really unlucky with this ETS. So we've done the pressure sensors and um, once I get to a point I'm happy to carry on, I'll um, drop the pan back off, which is only bottled on just to keep oil out from dripping. And I'm just gonna bolt this back in now we've done that.
Right guys, so the car's pretty much there now. So the gearbox is back in the car, subframes up, props are on, etc. All the other stuff that you take off to do it, like your front wheel drive shaft. Um, the, only the only thing we've got left to put on is the exhaust. So uh, I'm in the middle of sorting it out now. It's actually a bit of a job on its own because um, alongside the exhaust hanger brackets, which are from a snapped, which is very common on these uh, with the age it is. Don't be fooled, it's not a my 17 onwards it's a it's a cba car with a nice my 17 kit on it to give it that updated look so um yeah it's over 10 years old so i've got to sort all that out and sort all the rear under tray fixings and brackets out because they're all rotten um apart from that it has got a bit of a job list to it quite a nice job list but just like coolant change brake fluid change um i had to sort this daytime running light out because that had the wiring had basically fallen apart for it uh what else have we been up to yeah just just basically general maintenance and tidying up teeth mess sensors and just just stuff like that but next step will be to get the car up and running it's got oil in it now in a gearbox bleed the coolant out as i've mentioned i've changed that but also i do disconnect the coolant um as much as you can try and blank it off where it's at the gearbox you do lose a little bit so bleed the coolant get the gearbox up to temperature 50 degrees i aim for uh, run it through the gears and then turn it off raise it back up check for level top up if need to be and then once said all all, uh, all of that is done, then I can get the car back down over to the other unit where our alignment ramp is, do an alignment, and then last step would be to put all the trays on. So thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully some of this has educate, been educating for you guys, um, if not at least entertaining um, to some sort of level, but yeah, it gives you a bit of an insight as to what happens and what can be involved, etc. cetera. Um, obviously some of the problems or things we've gone through are very common. So if you do have any questions or come across any sort of these sort of problems that might have been mentioned or anything that's not been mentioned but you want a question feel free to message us or phone in and i'm sure we'll be able to sort you out thank you